the money making uh, ability of Tesla as an investment as a company, I think, is quite obvious to many. It's just a valuation. It's a valuation equation. So when Tesla went down to a hundred bucks a share uh, for the two seconds it was there for, uh, a lot of a lot of the conversation was like, "Wow, I've I've never considered Tesla an investment, but now I do because it's at a PE of twenty. You know, I'm like, okay, so so here's what's happening. There there is a there's a lot of people that I think do view the company as something that's a that's a that's a good thing to be a part of, but it's just too rich for them. So I, I wonder how much of that dynamic just plays out in the long term versus somebody actually trying to take over the company and do it for ill versus being like, you know what, I'm just going to park my money here once it becomes cheap enough for me. And then I'm just going to let Elon do his thing because he's the greatest builder of our time and he's going to make me a shit ton of money. And then I'll go to sleep sound at night and I'll go freaking ride some bears. You know, I don't know. Like, do you think yeah. that's naive? So, full, full disclosure, not, yeah. legal, not legal advice. Here we okay. go. So go. like when some guy, you, Farzad comes to visit me, asks me about his situation we can't talk about right here that he's my son secretly <laughs> we, can't, we can't mention that um he asked me you know what are the potential problems what could happen i'm the lawyer i give him like the one percent answer so mm. like when i talk about like the takeover by the martians that's the one yeah. percent answer that's me covering my ass as a lawyer um, i don't really believe that stuff's gonna happen i agree and I believe that you know the more logical conclusion is that it it generates cash. I don't I don't know, I don't know what happens to the stock, but it generates a whole boatload of money as a business. It makes a ton of money, and I think in the end it has to convert over to the stock price. In terms of the stock price, so I I bought uh, I bought in the I bought I bought down I bought as low as one oh six. I didn't buy for maybe two months, three months. In the last week, I bought in the 180s. I started okay. buying. I think it may okay. go lower, but I, but but the point is, I don't think it's going to go back to 106 right. for, the, for the rest of time. So it may go down to 160. That might be the new bottom. And then maybe a year from now, 220 might be the new bottom. You know, because yeah. it because if you look at it, it does it nothing goes straight. It does go up and down, you know, and it makes sense when people make enough money, they sell and then that the stock price decreases. And then when it gets low enough, people think they can make money and they buy and, and it goes, it. It goes yeah, up. Yeah. 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 So I think people kind of freak out when those natural uh, occurrences happen. But I think it's a fair price at the current time. And anybody who was buying long term, you know, absent something like we're talking about. Absent something where the curve that Tesla is on is interrupted, it's a good investment. You'll do well. Ten years from now, you'll be happy. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I, and that's not legal advice or or uh, not investment advice. advice. It's just yeah. not advice. Period. It's not. It's uh, not. I was on a on a, uh, a Twitter space yesterday uh, with Wolf Financial. Actually, I want to tell this story. Actually, before we even do that, do you want to take a wild guess on how many people are watching us right now? Just two bozos. You want to take a you want to take a guess? Me? Yeah, like how, how many people are watching us right now? You think? Uh, well, Live. you kind of you kind of led me to believe it's either three or uh, <laughs> no, us two bozos. I'm saying. Yeah, I know three. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying three. People. You think it's there's the third person? <laughs> three or eleven hundred and eighty-two. Twelve seventy-one. That's pretty close. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you all so much. I can't believe you're here. <laughs> I'm very happy that you're here. They must be yeah. they must be drugged or something or I don't know. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> they can't their button, their change cancel buttons not working. Yeah. Or or they have a, a, us up on their on everyone's uh TV on Good Friday and they're all enjoying our programming on Good Friday, okay. which uh yeah. apologies for the cursing. Uh I was on a uh, Twitter space yesterday uh and there was a, a gentleman that was on there that was uh actually was was talking about investing in Tesla you know, he said, I'm not, a, no, I'm not a bull. I'm not a bear. I'm just a realistic person. And uh, I, I view Tesla as a, as a company that it doesn't have uh, earnings that reflect the forward PE that it has. I believe it's a 30 PE. And I just don't think it's going to generate a lot of earnings for the next uh, two to three years. And I think what, what sort of that brought to my mind was like, okay, so it does seem like 
it does seem like even at these levels with the kind of market that we're in, Tesla is being viewed as a company that needs to generate earnings to be able to uh, to sort of warrant its valuation. But then what I thought about is like, okay, so back in 2019, 2020, when the company wasn't making that much money, it, it got a valuation of a trillion dollars because of its growth potential. And I think about the company now, I'm like, well, the growth potential really hasn't changed. It's just, you know, it's transitioning from the three and the Y to the compact car and the cyber truck and the van and the bot and energy. So why is it? And you tell me, like, this is why I can't understand why the stock market is this way, why, or why people like throw out these PE numbers. Like, I just don't get it. I mean, I think I'm just stupid. But like, how come, how come when the company just has the growth potential, it gets a valuation of, and a PE of in the hundreds, but when it's both earnings and growth, it only gets the earnings uh, price earnings ratio. Can you help me understand that? Like, yeah. I don't get that. Yeah. So first of all, it's possible you could be stupid. So that's okay. Possible. I agree. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. I think that's the agree. highest likelihood. I wanted to agree with you and support you on that. <laughs> okay. Um, um, <laughs> on the uh, earnings side. Yeah. I You're think so supportive. What is Gary, Gary Black kind of does this. Anything that's not like present is not counted. So, you know, that includes cyber trucks. You know, that, then how going. come he invested in Tesla before it generated earnings? Then, well, at, at, at well at the time, I don't know. You have to ask him that. I, I really don't know. I, I don't. I, I thought don't he was his representative. I was going to say I don't think it's value. I don't think it's fairly valued because it's not treated as a value stock where the income would be fairly valued, and it's not treated as a growth stock where its growth would be purely valued. Because yeah. it should be, it should be, it should be connected to its peg ratio, you know, the growth of its earnings over its growth, and they use kind of like one ish is kind of like a as a number. So if you did a 40, 40 PE, it's doing forty percent growth. That's a one peg ratio. That's perfectly appropriate. For some reason, it doesn't get valued fairly. I think that's that's just the reality of it. It's weird. I don't think it's tied to reality or rationality because. You could just pick one or two items that are likely to occur and discount the crap out of them. You know, you could, the robot. I could say it's worth ten trillion and say there's a two percent chance of that happening, but I give it a value. I'd say I two percent times ten trillion, and I give it a value, a present value. So to not do that kind of thing, I don't think is really fair, and I think it's super cover your ass because. Maybe they don't 100% believe they could rely on Elon to do exactly what they expect. Yeah, I think I think that's 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 I, I agree with that 100%. And and to me, what it proves is that all these metrics don't mean anything to me. Like if they just if they're just arbitrary measures that are uh, tailored to averages of industries that are just pulled out of nowhere to try to justify a position that is psychological and arbitrary you know so it's kind of like it doesn't actually it, it 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 masks itself as a scientific approach and all it is is that you're just picking and choosing the metrics that look scientific to try and drive forward a narrative that you want to drive. And I'm not saying I'm not guilty of it. I think every single person is, because when I'm sitting here and I'm saying, well, Tesla has the potential to be a $10 trillion, $20 trillion company, I'm saying, well, based on some PE ratio, right? But I yeah. think the, the more I'm, I'm more in this, the more I think about this is I feel like, I do wonder at some point, if at some point, the, the measure of the team of a company is ultimately its biggest asset because that's what sets the culture, that's what creates the product, that's what creates the service, that's what creates the experience, right? And so I wonder if it's just at some point, uh, a lot of these uh, investors or folks that analyze these companies when they think about price earnings and stuff like that, I just, I wonder how much of the equation is the team and the prior execution and sort of the experience that that team has built up, you know? And I wonder if, if that ever gets, counted in that equation or it's just is 80 percent of investing just looking at pe ratios and if that's the case it's no wonder tesla is not where it needs to be <laughs> I, and I, I agree i like 100 percent the pe ratio that's complete fabrication nonsense you know i i think that tesla should be valued 
37 times my age. That's about as relevant. Really? Why 30? Why, you know, just <laughs> what a pit that would be a good number, by the way. For, so 104 or whatever that yeah, number yeah, is. No, yeah. uh, no, a thousand, I think a thousand, <laughs> no, two thousand would be two thousand. Uh, I agree hundred percent because it's completely arbitrary. The fact that Apple gets like a super premium uh a uh, uh, PE uh, Costco, plans. Chipotle. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it makes no sense. It it yeah. it's that's the uh that in essence is like if you look at a balance sheet and you look at the goodwill value of a company, that's just kind of like it's made up. It doesn't doesn't exist. You know, it's a brand. So what is it worth? Hard to tell. Um, that's what I think of this. It's complete fabrication. The fact that Apple is worth X PE is because I say so, not because there's a hard and fast scientific rule that I can punch out. I put in the formula and here it goes. Completely arbitrary. So I agree to a large part, it is what you have. It's what you, your basic existence, what your team is and what you are, what your mission statement is, because everything else is kind of outside of your control, unfortunately. Right. It's all psychology, right? It's all, it's, I feel like it's all just based on psychology. And as much as we want to make this a, a scientific, uh, a scientific endeavor to want to invest in companies. And listen, I don't know what I'm talking about. So I, I want to be very sure in saying this. I have, I'm just sort of like thinking out loud just for the audience, for the 1300 people that are watching this, like, don't view me as somebody who knows what he's talking about. I have no idea what I'm talking about, but it does seem very psychological in a sense that a lot of these metrics, a lot of these things are still based on human action. You know, it's like, hey, I think this thing is is good, so I'm going to buy it. I'm going to use this number to justify that it's good. Okay, cool. You can, you can do that. But I just don't know how much value that place when you have disruption and game-changing technology that is actually looking to disrupt the auto market. Just look at, I mean, the the for example, the, the latest price decreases for Tesla, the Model Y now is cheaper with the EV tax credit, the long range, than the average new car price in the United States. You know, that seems like a that seems like a big deal that can't really be measured with that stuff. But anyway, I digress. Do you have any topics before we hit Q&A? Yeah, yeah I was going to say. So I I wonder if counterintuitively, because like guys like Gary Black say if Tesla's if uh, Elon steps down from CEO that the uh, that Wall Street would hate it, whatever. Um, but maybe if like Tom stepped into CEO and Elon is, you know, chairman of the board and basically the overseer and he's the product guy maybe the outcome is completely different than what we expect. And we get like a Tim Cook effect that we get Wall Street's comfortable. They know he's more predictable and uh, they know Elon's still in the background. So there'll still be, you know, uh, change and new products. And uh, so who's to know? Because again, that's the exact point. Guessing the stock price and what's going to drive the stock price seems to be irrespective a lot of times of the business yeah yeah okay 